Hi, I'm Bill Kirstner, an Assistant General Counsel with the FLRA's Office of the General Counsel. This video covers official time under the Federal Service Labor Management Relations Statute. While not defined in the statute, official time is paid duty time for federal employees who serve as union representatives or bargaining unit employees needing to consult with their union. Employees on official time are authorized to perform certain union-related activities while receiving their federal salary. Section 7131 governs the entitlement to official time. The concept of official time predates the statute and was used in executive orders to recognize that just as management performs its labor management functions in a paid status, that employees performing their union duties on official time similarly promotes effective and efficient government. Official time is an entitlement under the statute. The topic of official time is substantively negotiable. That means that labor organizations may require bargaining on a contract provision governing official time. To understand how statutory official time works, let's examine Section 7131, which is divided into four subsections. First, Section 7131A provides, any employee representing an exclusive representative in the negotiation of a collective bargaining agreement under this chapter shall be authorized official time for such purposes including attendance at impasse proceedings during the time the employee otherwise would be in a duty status. Any questions about 7131A official time? I have a question. Which bargaining unit employees can be granted official time under this subsection? Employees who are negotiating on behalf of the bargaining unit on which they are employed, but official time is not authorized to negotiate for a different bargaining unit. What types of activities are included in 7131A official time? Contract negotiations, including bargaining local agreements. What about travel time? Employees are on 7131A official time when traveling to participate in negotiations. What about representation petitions? What impact do they have on official time? The right to official time exists even if a representation petition has been filed challenging an existing bargaining unit. Since an agency must recognize the existing union and fulfill its obligations to the certified union until the petition is decided, official time must continue to be granted to the union representatives. If there are no more questions, let's now turn to 7131B, which states, any activities performed by any employee relating to the internal business of a labor organization, including solicitation of membership, election of labor organization officials, and collection of dues shall be performed during the time the employee is in a non-duty status. This section outlines certain internal, non-representational activities that may not be performed while on official time. These activities may be performed before or after the duty day, during breaks, or while on approved leave. Any questions about 7131B's limits on official time? I have one. When a union files reports with the Department of Labor, say the Office of Labor Management Standards, can we use official time to complete the reports? Yes. Under authority precedent, these required reports may be completed on official time. Turning now to 7131C, this section states, the authority shall determine whether any employee participating for or on behalf of a labor organization in any phase of proceedings before the authority shall be authorized official time during the time the employee would otherwise be in duty status. This official time covers when FLRA staff request to take affidavits, prep witnesses for hearings, or have witnesses provide testimony in ULP, representation cases, or any other authority matters. Remember, FLRA hearings are official government proceedings, and federal employees can be required to testify and may be subject to subpoena. When providing testimony before the FLRA, federal employees are entitled to do so on duty time. How is official time scheduled? While official time for participating in FLRA matters is mandatory, when it comes to speaking with federal employees during investigations, OGC agents typically ask for a specific time, but are open to mission-critical concerns that prevent the release of the employee as requested. During investigations, FLRA agents are open to discussing other times when employees can be released on official time. Subsections A and C grant official time for collective bargaining and FLRA-related activities as a statutory right. However, official time for other representational activities must first be negotiated under 7131D. So let's turn to where the bulk of official time used by federal employees is authorized, Section 7131D. 
This section provides that all other official time shall be granted in the amount agreed upon by the agency and exclusive representative as reasonable, necessary, and in the public interest. This means all other official time, other than that referenced in 7131 A and C, is subject to bargaining by the parties. Official time is substantively negotiable and a mandatory subject of bargaining, meaning neither the agency nor the union has the right to unilaterally impose terms, amounts, or a process. Instead, the statute requires parties to negotiate over official time and, upon request, include official time articles in the contract. Parties have flexibility in doing this. Some unions negotiate a set percent of time for specific union representatives. This may mean the local president may be granted 20, 24, or even 40 hours a week, and a fixed number of other officials may be granted at a fine number of hours per week or per pay period. Other unions negotiate a yearly bank of hours and then make withdrawals from those banked hours until depleted. Some agencies deposit hours based on the total number of unit employees by totaling up one, two, or three hours per person. Other agencies simply deposit an agreed upon number of hours in the bank each year. Some parties are very creative when negotiating official time agreements. One contract listed numerous possible uses and then provided presumed appropriate amounts of official time for each possible use, subject to more time being granted if necessary. While many parties develop a specific process for requesting and then granting or denying official time, some parties decide to delay making a decision. These parties' contracts require requests be made for each desired grant of official time and may simply state, requests will be granted that are reasonable, necessary, and in the public interest. A good tip is for employees who use official time and their supervisors to discuss, outside of any specific request, the many scenarios that may arise to ensure both parties develop a mutual understanding about how the process will work. Any more questions? Yes. Does an agency violate the statute any time it denies official time? An agency may violate the statute if it denies official time for negotiations under 7131A or for FLRA proceedings under 7131C. An allegation that an agency denied official time under 7131A or C can be addressed in an unfair labor practice proceeding, but most official time questions are covered by Section 7131D, which requires unions and agencies to bargain and agree on the amount of and uses for official time. To follow up, how are disagreements about 7131D official time addressed and resolved? Disputes over Section 7131D official time are covered by the party's contract, not the statute. When a union representative requests contractual official time and the agency denies the request, like any other contractual issue, the union may file a grievance under the negotiated grievance procedure and arbitration may be necessary. Any final questions? What are valid representational purposes for official time under 7131D? There are many legitimate uses, including employees asking to speak with their union representatives about possible grievances, union representatives speaking to union employees about possible or pending unfair labor practice charges, time used to research potential grievances or ULP charges, to draft charges, to prepare for settlement discussions, or to present these matters, time to attend legal training, and time to represent employees in investigatory examinations or formal discussions, to name just a few. In summary, unit employees are entitled to official time for bargaining, to appear before the FLRA, and for representational purposes. And don't forget, official time cannot be used for internal union business. We hope this training provided a useful overview about official time. For more information, visit us online. And as always, feel free to contact the FLRA for assistance.